Hey, what is up guys? Today I got a very special video for you all. We're going to be going through rolls 1 through 5. Obviously that's every roll in Dota. I'm going to be giving you 5 heroes that I think are the best for literally every single one of these rolls in the new patch. And let's get into it. This is going to be a pretty freaking long video, so get a little bit of water, get some popcorn, sit down, relax, let's get into it. And hopefully I inspire you guys to play some of these heroes in your upcoming pubs based on their win rates, why I think these heroes are good, what was changed about them, even though some of the heroes are actually the same, some are very different, and let's get into it. And now I want to tell you guys a little bit about Dota Plus from Overwolf. This is a free stats app you guys can download right now that's going to show you your stats for the last three months. So if you want to know your games played, your MMR, your win rate, your XPM, your GPM, all of these things you need to track to know how well you're doing and what you need to change to gain MMR, you can get for absolutely free. On top of that, the biggest reason why you need to download Dota Plus, at least for me, is the ban suggestions. Basically, it tells you what the enemy team is good at. It tells you their best heroes, what they've been winning with. You just ban it. You might be wondering why your good heroes, why your best heroes keep getting banned. It's because of Dota Plus. The enemy team is using it and banning out your best heroes. So go download Dota Plus right now and I'll see you guys there. All right, let's start off with the safe lane roll. So I'm not going to be going in a specific order. However, I will mention when I think a hero is particularly good when I think it is the best of, of its group. So let's start off with the safe laner, and our first hero is actually Bristleback. The main reason why I'm, I'm such a fan of Bristleback in this current meta, and the hero's win rate has actually increased quite a bit, was number one, it was actually buffed in the recent patch, uh, so that's always nice, but more importantly, it is a hard counter to a large percentage of the offlane hero pool. It's very good against, well, unit heroes. The reason why is you're a hero that likes to buy Vanguard, and as a result, the um, consistent physical damage or the high, you know, amounts of damage that you will be taking from heroes like Lycan, Visage, Beastmaster, Enigma, all these very popular offlaners right now, well, Bristleback is very good against them. On top of that, his Ags is also very good against all these heroes. So, not only is he good in lane against these heroes, he's good in game against these heroes, and he also takes advantage of the fact that a lot of those heroes are actually pretty low armor and the goo actually destroys them as a result. So I'm definitely a huge fan of Bristleback in this meta. I wouldn't say it's my number one carry, but I would say it's definitely something to pick when you have information of the offlaner or of the enemy draft being some sort of death ball based around unit heroes. Getting into number two, we have Terrorblade, a hero that received one of the biggest buffs of the recent patch going from 15 damage to level 1 to 30 on its metamorphosis, making this hero, uh, who was already a good laner, into a very, very dominant laner. I honestly think it pairs very well with a lot of the popular position 5s that I'll be talking about in today's video. I don't want to go too much into that right now, as I want to cover the 5s when we get to that, but I think he also synergizes very well with a lot of the popular 4s, even a lot of the popular uh, 5s as well. Both of the support heroes that I think are good right now are also very good with Terror Blade. Also, technically, he is very good against this high physical damage meta that we're seeing from the offlane. I also believe he's one of the better carries when it comes to countering Visage. Uh, I think he's quite good against Lycan in lane. I think he's decent against Beastmaster. I think he's solid against Enigma. And so if you're against even something like Viper or Razor that are also popular right now, I do believe that Terror Blade has relatively good matchups against a lot of these heroes, especially if his position 5 hero is a hero that can apply aggression in the lane. So I'm a big fan of Terror Blade, and I expect to see a lot of it in the pro scene. I do want to warn you guys, it's hard to play though, so you're gonna grief in pubs if you're not careful. Make sure, you know, you play quite a bit of games of TB before feeling like uh, you're you're good at the hero, because trust me, you're gonna grief on Terror Blade. Getting to number three, we have Razor. So I think Razor carry is something that Tundra has shown to me is very powerful. I think it's particularly good with Io, I will admit. I think that combo is the main thing that really does enable Razor right now, which is a little bit niche and specific, but even if you don't have that, I think Razor is just such a lane dominator. And really what's great about him in pubs is you can even first pick it in pubs if you want. You can even first phase in an all pick. Uh, however, even if you second phase it, more often than not, you're gonna have a good matchup. This hero has like very little bad matchups. It just doesn't. I, I honestly thought the hero would get nerfed in the last two patches. It hasn't. And so, yeah, the hero's been good for a while. I'm not going to lie. I don't think it's like some wild hero right now, but I think it's reliably just very good. I think it scales well. It's a good laner. It farms fine as long as you spam your ulti. It's just good. Next up is Faceless Void. I really think this hero is somewhat undervalued right now. 
I like a lot of greedy mids in this current meta. Um, I think there's a lot of greedy ranged mids that we'll be talking about that I think Void pairs unbelievably well with. So I expect to see a lot of these strategies at a high level. And you, of course you can do this in your pubs as well. It just requires a little bit of pick synergy. But I expect to see this like Void safe lane with some sort of like Wave Shove 5. It could be Treant, Phoenix, Crystal Maiden, Wyvern, something along those lines. And then your mid is like a Lina or a Lesh. I think these team comps are very difficult to play into. They have very good lanes as Void loses not too many lanes. I will admit he's not great against like death ball unit drafts, which is probably his biggest weakness. However, if you can ban for those, especially as we'll see in the pro scene, I think teams will ban the unit heroes and then look for something like a Void. And I do believe that that's going to be a pretty powerful uh, in this current meta. And finally is Bloodseeker, the hero that I think might be one of the best carries of the patch. If not, what I will see is like the best carry of the patch. I think this hero is just straight up good. It's good against these unit heroes. The reason why is it kind of just out sustains them in the lane. It like beats Visage in lane, it beats Lycan in lane, it beats Beastmaster in lane. It can lose the Beast, I guess, but generally I would say it does well against Beast as long as your five can help you pressure early on. So I guess a bit of a, you know, an if there. But um, yeah, I think this hero is just good. I, I don't even know what to say about it. I feel like it hasn't been like wildly buffed. I just think this hero has been actually good for a while now, but has been undervalued. I will admit that I think you should generally pick it when you know you're going to have a good lane. As this hero, while it does farm fast, needs a decent start. It needs to get to that Maelstrom before it starts actually farming. And so, yeah, make sure when you're looking to pick something like Bloodseeker, try to pick it when you have like an Ogre or a Bane in your lane. Um, even something like Winter Wyvern that can follow up or set up for the Blood Rite is going to do well. So yeah, I, I would keep that in mind. If you can look for those things, get your Maelstrom, hit level 10, get your attack speed, max out your Q, max out your E with one point in Blood Rite. This hero not only dominates lane, but is one of the fastest farmers in Dota 2. Getting into the mid lane, all right, let's talk about our first hero, Leshrac. I think this is one of the most reliable laners of the patch. I honestly think a lot of the other popular mids have been nerfed. Uh, which has really led way to Leshrac being a better hero. I don't think Leshrac is necessarily good against, like, these death ball comps that run at you with physical damage. I think Lesh can struggle against those. While he does have AoE damage to technically deal with units, usually it's not enough. Lesh generally actually prefers to play against, like, single target damage or illusion carries. Because illusions kind of just instant pop to, to you know, Leshrac. But I don't know, I just see this hero winning. I think it's really good a lot with a lot of the roaming fours right now. For instance, I think Marcy Leshrac is an incredible combo. The reason why is early into the lane, like five, six minutes in, Leshrac has ult. All Marcy has to do is just hop onto the enemy mid. No matter where they are, she's gonna catch them. It's gonna give movement speed to Leshrac. You're gonna easily be able to close the gap, get on top of who you're going on, explode them with a stun and the stun combo. It's really good. And Leshrac often wants to have a save on his team, Marcy, with her Q and her Shard, has two of the better saves in Dota. Next up is Pudge. Guys, I'm telling you, I, I am telling you now, people don't know how to play Pudge well right now, and the hero's win rate is still good. When people really understand what items to buy on this hero and how to play it and how to maximize it, this hero is going to pop off. I believe Pudge is so underrated right now. I am such a fan of this hero. Fleshy allowing you to turn your Rot on and use it as an offensive ability consistently in the laning stage is unbelievable. The fact that you take no damage from neutral camps is insane. The fact that you can count hard counter certain heroes that do damage over time. For instance, Jakiro does no damage to Pudge. Level 1 Sky Ulti does no damage to Pudge. Jugspin does like no damage to Pudge. This hero has some crazy matchups, some crazy interactions, and I, I think it's best as a mid. It's so easy to last it and, and play for the runes. You can hook the runes if you need to. You know, you can hook power runes. You can hook people when they're going for the runes. It's just such a good mid, in my opinion, uh, with with its buffs. I know that's a hot take, but I believe this hero is going to be looked at a lot. Next up is Lina. Um, just a hero that's been buffed recently. It went from 15 second duration on the passive to 18. I think it's honestly just... I, I will say it struggles against, once again, the Death Bowl. So I think in the pro scene, what we'll see is Lina picks when these heroes are banned out, which I think will be very likely to have happen. We're going to see a second phase Lina with a lot of bans on unit heroes. Uh, but when we do see that, Lina loses almost no mid matchups, so it's a really good 16-17. If you don't know what I mean, uh, basically, when you have first pick in Dota, uh, in Captain's mode, 
you're going to get counterpicked. Your mid laner is almost always going to get counterpicked. And so having a hero like Lina or Leshrac is really nice because these heroes have very few losing matchups, if not zero losing matchups if you're good enough. And so, yeah, it's really nice to pick these heroes. I honestly think Lina's good. She's a BKB buyer, which did get nerfed. So that's one of the downsides of this hero. But other than that, I'm a big fan of the hero. Next up is Puck. EG first picking Puck. Pretty crazy stuff. Just picking it so early on to the draft. I, I believe in this hero as well. Um, I think Witchblade's honestly a good item. It feels so nice, especially with the nerfs to Null. I like being able to buy this Robe of Magi and use it as a way to amplify my bottle because you can backpack it. That feels really nice to me. It gives you a bit of extra damage early on and just in general, the stats from Witchblade make Puck really, really hard to kill. This Kai Assange Witchblade build on Puck is pretty insane. You have like 1700 HP and, and a lot of armor and some status resist. Your hero is so tanky and is just a menace to the backline. Like you just annihilate these, these support duos. So anytime any team picks like low stun supports, I think we're going to see a Puck. I think it's going to be a very common pick, this DPC. Um, and yeah, I, I really like Puck's talents as well. The Illusory Orb talent at 10 feels great. The uh, Dream Coil cooldown or Waning Rift damage at level 10 or at level 15 feels great. And level 20 is 6 seconds off of Waning Rift, which is Puck's silence, is a wild talent. So I honestly think this hero has so much potential. And finally is Batrider. Just think the hero is good. Like, <laughs> even though it's been nerfed 8 million times, its win rate still stays up there. The reality is if you can pick it into something like Kunkka and solo kill the guy, you're going to carry the game. All right, getting into the off lane. Starting it off is Viper. This hero has not changed. It didn't get nerfed. It's just good. It's just Viper. It wins lanes. It wins most lanes really hard. So it's good. Next up is Beastmaster, one of the most contested heroes of the pro scene right now. This maxed Wild Axis build that has become very popular as of late is just very versatile. It loses almost no lanes, and as a result, teams are picking it. It's also a vision hero with the BKB piercing stun. Also, its you know favorite item, Helm of the Overlord, also got buffed recently quite hard. So that's nice. On top of that, the other thing you can consider is drums is a really good item. And that's going to be a bit of a common theme between the next few heroes. The other heroes are Lycan and Visage. Visage also buys Vlads and Drums, as well as Wraith Pact, which is still a pretty good item. Lycan still buys Helm of the Overlord uh, and plays very high tempo with these Drums tempo drafts that we're seeing quite a bit of. Right, We just saw Tundra run it twice in a row and freaking dominate. And then we have Enigma, who also can buy Wraith Pact and Drums if truly desired. And so, yeah, these unit heroes, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm still trying to figure it out. I mean, obviously the Helm of the Overlord got buffed. Wraith Pact is good. Drums is really good, which, you know, anytime you can buy the meta items, especially if it's like an aura patch, which I wouldn't say it's necessarily an aura patch, but kind of feels like it sort of is, then these heroes will just thrive because they buy these items just inherently, right? They buy them for themselves and then it just giga buffs their team. So yeah, it just, I don't know, it just seems to work out in these heroes favors so if you want me to pick one of them i would definitely suggest learning beastmaster the wild axis build is kind of what in my opinion makes this hero the best of the the unit heroes because visage can get hard punished in lane lycan can kind of get hard punished in lane um and it's pretty linear it has to take wolves where beastmaster it can play this like range creep secure magical damage nuke build and then if you pick to counter the boar it's just like okay great i'm not even using boar so it's whatever right it just doesn't matter and so yeah i'm a big fan of beastmaster for that reason very flexible in the draft great base stats snowballs buys the meta items his shard is insane and uh yeah that's all for the offlane heroes if you want me to repeat the moves viper beastmaster enigma lycan and visage all for kind of similar reasons except for viper that hero is just kind of nuts coming in at number four the position four roll we have wyvern I honestly think Wyvern is insanely good. I do believe this hero wants a little bit of farm, which is why I prefer it generally actually over four uh, instead of five. I, I, I've been saying it's a good five. I do believe it's actually a little bit better as a four from what I've seen as of late. And really the main reason is you want to get your shard if you can. You want to get a blink if you can. You want an aether if you can. You want a glimmer. This hero feels great with items. It, if it can stay alive in team fights and have good positioning with a blink, with an aether, with a glimmer... It, it puts in work. The low cooldown of the Q and the buff to Q is insanely good at every point in the game. Um, the And just getting off a win good Winter's Curse is like game-changing, right? So 
Just a lot of synergy here. Uh, really powerful stuff. And so I, I really believe in Wyvern. In fact, I think he could be one of the better fours at this patch because he's so freaking good against the offlane meta that we're seeing. He's also very good against a lot of the safe laners we talked about. I think he's a hard counter to Bristle because you do percentage based damage, you heal, you kill whoever's next to Bristle. I think he's great against TB. I think he's great against Razor. I think he's great against Void. I think he's great against Bloodseeker. The only problem is sometimes he's not the best laner, but even then you can pick him with something like a Terrorblade or a Bloodseeker or a Razor in lane, heroes that are like just naturally good in lane. And you can have a good laning stage anyway because he provides a lot of slow. So honestly, I believe that this hero is very undervalued, especially in the pro scene. And I expect teams to, to really look more into it. Next up is Clockwork. Ever since they just gave it the ability to wave shove, I think this hero is just way better than what it was. I think it was already a good hero and now it can clear your ways, which is really cool. It's just, it just is, right? It's like, okay, you have this hero that provides vision, long range initiation, BKB counter, one of the hardest BKB counter heroes in the game because Cogs also is good against BKB. And it's, you know, it's a good laner. Honestly, Clock's just a well-rounded hero. The only thing it, it's bad against is like illusions, which obviously you should draft around. You know, if you're gonna have a clock on your team, you should keep in mind that this unit meta is gonna crush it, right? So that's the only thing I'd be careful about. If you're gonna beat Clock, it's not good against Lycan. It's not great. It's pretty meh against Peacemaster. It's okay against Enigma because you can cancel Black Hole through BKB. So that one's good, right? But like, you know, it, but it's also just really not great against Visage. So it's okay, I guess it can punish it in the lane potentially, but in general, it, it's not good against this meta. So you gotta be a little bit careful with clock. I think if it's a good clock game though, this hero is insanely powerful as you can farm some items and be really good at, at playing the dead lane as you're quite hard to gank because you can scout the ganks with rocket flare, cogs if you get gone on, and hookshot away. The next one is Doom. This hero is just good, honestly. They did nerf the, uh, the satyr mana burn creep thingy in the recent patch, which was good. But it's still honestly powerful, still a good creep, frankly. So I think Doom 4 is just reliable. It really enables a lot of these uh, offlaners as well. I think it's great with Visage in lane, it's great with Enigma in lane, and it's great with Viper in lane. So I think it really enables these type of heroes. On the note of enabling these heroes, we also have Marcy, who also enables the shit out of all of these heroes. I mean, in particular, oh my god, if you have to lane against Marcy Viper, I, I'm praying for you, man. Oh my, this is the worst lane in Dota. It is impossible to win. Impossible. You gotta have, like, Naga Siren. That's the only hero that stands a chance or something like that. I, it is, like, unbelievably difficult to lane this lane. I mean, you just get tossed into a creep wave. And then you get poison. And it's like, oh, maybe we can go on the Viper, right? Because, like, oh, you know, kill Viper early on into the lane. That's how to counter him. Joke's on you, because when Marcy rebounds off of him, or whatever that uh, BS ability is called, when she hops off the, the Viper, it gives him movement speed, and a lot of it. And so you can't even get on top of the Viper, because he the Marcy will just stun you with her low mana abilities, because they cost no mana. She'll just stun you, and then give the Viper movement speed. You can't get on top of him, which is the way to counter him. He, he, Marcy can throw the Viper away, too. <laughs> And then if you ever step out of position an inch, you are absolutely dead. You could be under your tier 1 tower, and Viper could be in base, and you are out of position against this hero. That's all I'm going to say. Next up is Shaker. This hero got a nice little buff. 0.3 stun duration on Zaphyr Shock at level 1. That's pretty good. The hero is honestly, I think it's just solid. I think it really enables a lot of these unit heroes that want a lot of XP early on as well. So I think Shaker is like kind of underrated. He just takes a while to come online, which is kind of meh, but... Other than that, I, I think Shaker's honestly underrated as a hero. I do believe that Shaker's got some potential. I don't know why teams aren't experimenting with it at all. It's it's fine in lane. Like, it's honestly a fine laner. It is. Like, you just Fisher block the early waves, and then after uh, Enchant Totem level 2 helps you trade. Your hero got armor buffs quite a bit ago, which helped to be a good laner. Aftershock just got buffed at level 1. That helps it be a better laner. At level 3, your hero has a lot of kill potential, so... All I'm saying is keep this hero in mind. I think it's pretty good. Getting into the position five roll, we got Ench. It's good against the uni heroes in lane. Doesn't die to them either. So it scouts them out, can take over their creeps when they have Helm Bomb. That's pretty good. Same thing for Chen, which is a second hero. That's pretty good. Treant, he counters these types of heroes because he gives 12 armor. That hero is wild. 12 armor from Treant, my God. What in the world is this? When you have a living armor maxed out, you literally give 12 armor for 30 seconds. Like, what the? It's a 15 second cooldown. You give 12 armor for 30 seconds. 
It is insane. Heroes like Viper and Razor just freaking love having 12 armor, man. I'm a huge fan of Trian. He also keeps your towers protected against his Death Ball drums. Vlad's garbage, right? He gives it a lot of uh, armor. Nitro's Grasp defends the tower. Um, and Overgrowth is a hard counter to these heroes. As well as, it's also very good against like, like a lot of the BKB carries that were that I mentioned earlier. Your Void, your Bloodseeker, you know, your Razor, your eh, TB is meh. Because like Manta and whatever, in high range. So that one's not so good. But you get the point. Big fan of the freaking train protector. I think this hero is really, really good. And I think it delays the push, which a lot of these uh, teams rely on. All right, getting into the next one, we have Phoenix. Also very good against the unit heroes. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but at the end of the day, what's going to be good is often what counters what's good, right? Like, <laughs> that's kind of how Dota plays out a lot of the time. So Phoenix, why is it good against these unit heroes? Slows the attack speed. These unit heroes cannot kill the egg because the, the the creeps and illusions don't do anything to egg. They don't affect it. And as a result, you're very good against these heroes. You fire spirit them, you counter the, that. Um, you're kind of an initiator against these heroes that often zone you out with their units because you can Icarus dive, which is, it's a bit impractical, but it honestly plays out quite quite a bit. You can slow from very far away, which is nice. And then Sunray, it's just, it's just good. Like, you can heal the people that are getting gone on. It obviously does a lot of damage to the units. It's really good in the egg, because honestly, I think Phoenix has, like, the one of the best shards in the game. Like, a top 5, top 10 shard. You can Sunray while um, in Supernova, so it gives you a second Sunray. It's like a refresher on your best ability, besides, obviously, your ulti. And so, yeah, this hero, I honestly think it's just very good in the meta. And you can pick it with a lot of these, like, self-sustaining safe laners. Like, I think it's so freaking good with Void. I think it's fine with Bloodseeker. I think it's good with Terrorblade. So I think it really just kind of fits. And finally is Crystal Maiden. Your ulti is insanely good against unit heroes. Crystal Nova is a 75 attack speed slow and AoE at max. Frostbite counters, you know, Helm Dom really, really hard. And yeah, that's all I have to say. I think CM, honestly, if I would have to pick one, one five I'd recommend spamming in pubs, it'd be Crystal Maiden. This hero has been buffed a lot as of late. It got a Crossbite cast range increase. Extra duration on the movement speed slow on its Q. Lost one strength, but like, who cares? Its ulti is a 90 second flat from 110. It's insane. So yeah, I'm a big fan of CM. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you disagree with me anywhere, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.